you last week. I felt like some of those defensive backs were kind of gunning for him, and it was sad to see that go down because I couldn't help him. From the line, you can see it as you're running your route and you're running a vertical route and you take a peek at the safety before you look at the ball and you just see him head down trying to spear you. You can see that from a mile away. He's a smart kid. He understands that. But it's just unfair. It kind of made me upset watching it. Now, Cruz missed that game with a calf strain, an injury that's kept him out of practice again on Tuesday. Jag safety Sergio Brown and cornerback Devon House denied those accusations. Antonio Pierce joins us now. Good morning. Morning, morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. Yes. Obviously, ODB lit it up last season as a rookie, became a household name, but let's put him on the hook here. How much, how difficult is this season going to be for ODB? First of all, you're on a Madden cover as a second-year player. Mm. You go to New York City and you take away all the shine from Victor Cruz, Eli Manning, the Jets, and everybody else, mm -hmm. and you're the biggest star. And you did that in 12 games. And all offseason, all we had to do is watch that catch. Now I'm talking about I'm a defensive player, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking on the outside. And I'm tired of hearing about that. Sure. You know, you, you, I'm tired of seeing you do the whip. I'm tired of seeing you doing all your dance moves. <laughs> you know, I dealt with that a little bit when we played Chad Johnson and mm -hmm. Terrell Owens. You wanted to take those guys out. And I mean that in a sense, you wanted to physically harm them. Mm -hmm. You want to say, you know what? I'm tired of seeing your antics. I'm tired of seeing that. You respect him as a football player, but you know, skill-wise, you probably can't match up with him. But what you can take advantage of is being physical and getting his head. And if you're on the sideline of the Giants like Victor Cruz and you're watching your top player get taken out, if I'm Victor Cruz, I can't wait to get on the field because now some of that's going to get relieved because they're not all eyes are going to be yeah. on Odell Beckham. And that's the problem. The Giants have nobody else around Odell Beckham to take that target off of him. Stephen A., what do you think? Well, listen, first of all, let's give the, uh, the players for the Jaguars the benefit of the doubt. Um, when you have an accusation levied against you, if they say that it wasn't true, that that's not what they were doing, uh, we don't have to take their words. I'm going to choose to take their words for it. What I would say to you is that I also think about the NFL and the focus that they have on avoiding headshots um, and how guys are getting penalized for that kind of stuff. And it really bothers me because for me, I have absolutely positively no problem with a defensive player targeting other players if you're trying to cave their chest in, if you're trying to, you know, you know, to put them on put them on their backside but not in their careers or not in their seasons. You see what I'm saying? There's a difference to me. And, and, and Antonio, you played. I didn't, particularly on this level. You would know better than me. So I'm not really debating it, just giving my point, and I'm open to being corrected. All I'm saying is the word spear, when I think about that, I think about guys targeting low, and I think there's no excuse for that. That's one of the problems that I have with the NFL. The NFL, obviously, as always, are thinking about themselves and not the health of their players because when they talk about these guys and focusing on concussion issues, to, to transfer that to encouraging guys to go so low where they're taking out your knees, that really, really concerns me. And I don't care what anybody say. If you ask a guy where would he rather get hit? He'd rather get knocked upside his head than have his knees and his legs taken out from under him. I just wish the NFL focused on low just as much as they focus on high. But if a guy is just targeting a receiver and you're waiting for him to come over the middle, even if he ain't looking, and you give him a shot in that midsection area, the neck, to the waist and you cave that brother's chest in and you're targeting him at every turn. I have no problem with that. That's big boy rules. Odell Beckham Jr., Victor Cruz, and all of the receivers in between should man up and deal with that. But I got a problem if you're hitting too high and obviously if you're hitting too low. That's just me. Mm. I want to go back and expand upon Antonio's early strong points that you made. This is New York City. And this young man, off one all-time great catch, just was launched into the biggest, brightest spotlight maybe on earth. Yep. Gotten, what, four different national TV commercials out of it after his rookie year, in which, as you point out, he only played 12 games. I think it's going to be a struggle for him this year. I think he's going to have to get his feet back on the ground and figure out how, how this game works because... He's not just going to be targeted by Eli Manning, as you said, and I don't mean this in a dirty way. He's going to be a target of every secondary and every linebacking core. They just are. 
He talks big. Uh, one DB told me in the offseason, he, he's a big trash talk. He really likes to talk because he really likes to back it up. But you know how that works. Yep. You, you better be able to back um, it up. So I, I think he's in for a little bit of a struggle hey, this year, hey, a grind. Hey, got, yeah, hey, go guys, the only thing I want to add is this. The catch was sensational. But this guy in 12 games did more than catch one pass. 91 receptions, 1,305 yards in 12 games. That's not one reception. That's a brother that came onto the scene and has proven he can ball. And you're going to have to deal with him because he's clearly capable of dealing with you. Elder Odell Beckham Jr. is a big time young receiver and he's put the NFL world on notice that he has arrived. Now they're dealing with him, but it ain't because of one catch. The one catch may have helped him get the endorsements, but it's also the other 90 catches had a lot to do with it in the 1,305 receiving yards in your rookie year in 12 games, four games shy of a full season. You know how many yards this brother could have accumulated over the course of four games? I can't ignore that. One thing about football, Regardless of who you are, you can be a Hall of Famer, greatest of all time. It will humble you. It will humble you. Mm -hmm. Somebody will humble you. And you just got to understand that it's going to happen at some point. Okay. And Stephen A., back to your point, I, I get it. The, the numbers are just sensational through the 12 games. But my friend Casey Joyner has a piece running right now on ESPN.com. And you can call it nitpicking if you will. But I respect Casey's breakdown knowledge. And he's predicting that Odell will struggle this year and he go it, it's too complicated for me to go through all the metrics that he uses but but he's making the case that Miles Austin had one sensational big year Mike Wallace had one big sensational year and then they kind of fell back to to here you know where they're pretty good but they're not great and he's projecting that Odell will fall back to a, a different okay. level I don't know because I saw greatness in him last year. I'm with yeah. you. I yeah. did. I did. And I talked to people who said we just couldn't cover him. Yeah. We could not deal with yeah, but, him. But 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 here's the here's the question for both of you. What's wrong with being very good? Yeah. On an NFL level, I, I understand that he he may not be as great as he pro he's projecting, or other folks are projecting he may be. We'll see. But what's wrong with being very good? There's a lot of dudes in the NFL who are not very good. He happens to be somebody that we're debating greatness or very good about. With Eli Manning as his quarterback, with Ruben Randall and Victor Cruz as his sidekick or him being their sidekick. That's not a bad scenario to be in. I would just say, I would yeah. just say keep mm -hmm. that in mind. Okay, I hear you. But we did have Odell on this show, and I found him to be it, off camera a humble kid and, and a little bit of a sensitive kid and I mean that in a good way and if it doesn't go quite right the humbling effect is it's going to hit him hard because all he knows is sensational success so far in this league. Wait a minute. Now you're in but this that's league, but what about New York? Real quick, yeah. Steve, what about New York? In New York, when you're on top of the world, you're on top of the world. And you know yeah. real quick, they'll drop your legs from underneath yeah. you. I'm talking Just about the media yeah. and everybody surrounding you. From being the first of the line to the end of the line, it yeah. can happen real quick. But, they're gonna, but, but why are they going to drop you, Antonio? No, why I'm are they going to drop you, AP? Only if your performance saying, is not at the that's, play. That's my point. Yeah. They're going to drop you. If your performance is worthy of you being dropped. Yep. So the bottom line is, he's got to go out of ball. He knows that. I have a silver lining for New York fans. I know you talked about the Madden curse, 11 players on Madden ended up with injuries or production dropping, but how about this? The two receivers, Larry Fitzgerald and Calvin Johnson, who are both on Madden, they had a increase in production mm. the two years they were on. So for wide receivers, if, if we're going to believe in curses there.